This morning, the Southern Minnesota Regional Medical Examiner's Office performed an autopsy. Law enforcement has confirmed the remains are those of Madeline Kingsbury. The search for missing mom, Madeline Kingsbury, ends in Minnesota, the father of her two children now behind bars. We have the latest on this tragic story. Um, they did publicly confirm that the remains that were found belong to my sister, Madeline. Welcome to Law and Crime Sidebar Podcast. I'm Anjanette Levy. Police in Winona, Minnesota, had been searching for Madeline Kingsbury since the end of March. Police and her family said she didn't show up for work on March 31st and didn't pick up her children, ages 5 and 2, at daycare that day. Adam Fravel, the father of the children, didn't have custody of them. He's being held at the Winona County Jail on a second-degree murder charge. Unfortunately, while this discovery is not what we were hoping for, we are thankful to be able to bring Maddie home to her family. Her body was found by a Fillmore County investigator on a remote stretch of road off Highway 43 north of Mabel at approximately 1.30 p.m. yesterday afternoon. Madeline's family searched for her along with volunteers. Her sister Megan posted on TikTok after her sister's remains were found. There's still a lot that we can't say. We still have to be extremely cautious. Um, you know, we've been saying we don't want to jeopardize the investigation, and that's still true. Um, we, you know, from the beginning thought that Adam had something to do with this and so we think that the right person is in custody and uh, we're confident that um, he will get the punishment that he deserves. Joining me to discuss the disappearance of Madeline Kingsbury and the fact that now her remains have been found is Joe Jackalone. He is a retired sergeant with the New York City Police Department's Cold Case Squad, also an adjunct professor at the John Jay College Department of Criminal Justice, and he's been on before with, on Sidebar here. So, Joe, welcome back. Thanks for coming back on. Thanks for having me. This seems like a case that unfolded pretty quickly. Uh, Madeline was reported missing March 31st. She didn't pick up the kids at daycare. and it seems like police are saying all roads led to the father of her two children. Her remains were found throughout the course of the investigation using some data. So your thoughts? Yeah, it's a sad ending to a case, uh, but it's not unusual in the respect that when somebody disappears or somebody is killed, uh, specifically when you have a, you know, a husband-wife situation or a significant other, the, all the attention goes to that other person. And it's just, be, why? Because most people are victimized by someone they know. And when you have a situation like this, you know, the, the police start leading right into that. And they start doing their homework and they start putting a case together. It's just as simple as that. Madeline was reported missing on March 31st, April 1st, somewhere in there. She, she doesn't show up for work. She doesn't pick the kids off at, up at daycare. She obviously dropped them off. These children are ages five and two. You know, her... The father of the children, obviously, something must have been going on there. Uh, does that they, they're being really tight-lipped about this? The family always suspected Adam. So, what are your thoughts? Well, we don't know exactly the relationship between the two, right? So, if you ask the husband, he would say everything was great, everything was fine. So, the other family members might have other clues into this. Now, remember, he was with her when the, she dropped the kids off. They went. He was the last one seen with her. So that's why I think the police zoned in on him pretty quickly. And remember, in these daycare centers, there's lots of video surveillance. So they actually know who was there and, and who stepped out of the car. And, you know, Matt, that video might have captured something, too, that we don't we are unaware of. Mm -hmm. So I think we see what I refer to as the three forensic horsemen in this case, video surveillance, Internet records and phone records. And I think that's what played a big role in these things. And you know what? Those are the things that are going to play big roles in many of these cases in the future, too. 
I think it's you, important that you point that out because Adam Fravel, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, didn't have custody of the two children, the five-year-old and the two-year-old, but something led police to him. Everybody's being really tight-lipped about that. But with those internet records, the cell phone records in particular, obviously they were able to pinpoint where Madeline's remains were were dumped. So it sounds like to me when they're saying, you know, throughout the course of the investigation, we found this location, it sounds like it's probably was cell phone data that led them to that area. Probably. I mean, that's what we have to speculate, right? We can think about that. And remember, they probably tracked his whereabouts too through the cell towers and the sea exactly try to pinpoint this down. I mean, they have it down within a few square feet. Like when I used to do this for a living, it wasn't that close, right? It was a much wider range. Now they have it down within a few feet. And they, the police also mentioned that there were basically other clues that her disappearance was involuntary. So, I mean, listen, when ladies leave the house, they rarely seldom leave pocketbooks and cell phones and keys and everything like that because they have to get somewhere. They got to go somewhere with the car or what have you. And what about money? What about, you know, people trying to call them? It's very unusual. Specifically, if I don't know if it's the case in this one, but when somebody has a lot of social media presence and then all of a sudden it just stops or just ends, it's generally a really bad sign. There is a second degree murder charge right now that Adam Fravel is being held on. Uh, it, it says second degree murder. It's not premeditated without intent. So there could be additional charges filed. The police are not commenting on what additional charges could be filed in this case. But second degree murder without intent, what does that tell you about what is being suspected as of now? Well, I, the police probably are missing that one little piece of evidence to, to push it over. Now, the police department, remember, they just put out the initial charges. Now it's up to the district attorney to see if they can do more. And that's generally the case. I know a lot of times people blame the cops for overcharging people in the initial arrest, but that's not the case. Generally, they, they put cases, they put charges that are much lower because the DA then has a chance to do this. That's what the DA's job does. They're the expert. They know the rules. They know the laws. And if the police can present them certain evidence, they could just uh, add additional charges. It's not a big deal right now. Where do you see this case going from here? There's so much that can't be said right now. Do you think that we'll learn that more charges will be filed or is it just going to all depend on what they find in the autopsy, what they may find in phone records? I'm assuming there would be a lot of communication between Madeline and Adam since they shared two children together. Well, absolutely. Right. So there's the, you have a relationship here. You have that constant communication. But like I said, Internet records can prove a thing, too. Right. We saw this up with the uh, Anna Walsh case where somebody was Googling certain things. So I think that might play a, a role in this. But also, just from the perspective from the police department, it, it appears as if they have their man. They've established probable cause. The district attorney is on board with these cases from the very beginning when you have a missing persons case or it ends up to be a homicide. So we had it. We used to call them the writing DA. They'll write along with it. They're right there. They can help us with subpoenas and help us get warrants and the like. So the police department generally, when you have these cases, are not acting with on their, within their own discretion per se. They have the district attorney. And remember, they are the ones that have to prosecute these cases. So if they're comfortable with this, so am I. One thing that stands out to me is the fact that Madeline, thank goodness, uh, was not missing or they were able to find her remains, I would say relatively quickly. It's, it's June now. She was reported missing on March 31st. Somehow they were led to this location. So it, it seems to me that this may show maybe this wasn't you know, planned. Maybe this was something that happened, maybe an argument. I know we're speculating on that, but obviously he wasn't able, according to the police, he's innocent until proven guilty. He wasn't able to cover his tracks all that much. Well, and there's also been, uh, according to the news, lots of interviews with him. So he might have slipped up something. He might have said something that the police made note of. But they're also, uh, I believe they're also referring to a tip that they got. And they also searched mm -hmm. that area prior to where the, the body was found. So they were pretty much on top of this in the beginning. And I think now they just that one little bit of information brought them back to the scene and, and they were able to uh, recover her remains. But I, I just think it shows that these cases sometimes take a while to develop and detectives are always working in the background. A lot of times people say, well, how come the cops aren't doing this too fast? Why did it take them so long? 
because you know you're at a disadvantage. The only there's only one person that knows exactly where the body is and what happened, and that's the killer. I mean, the victim knows too. Unfortunately, we can't talk to them. So this is what you're 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 doing. You're trying to act as the victim in this case and find to try to put put together at least the 48 hours prior to this, and maybe they can come up with some sort of uh, motive behind it. But uh, unfortunately, when you have cases like this where there's either custody disputes or disputes in domestic violence and those kind of things, that, that if that's evident, right? We don't know if that's evident or not. But you know, the, these are the kind of things that um, we need to do a better job with in, in our society too. I think it's important you point out there that, you know, only one person knows the facts really in the beginning. So many times people are like, what's taking so long? What's taking so long? When someone's reported missing like this, and it seems like people were really on top of this. I mean, Madeline was reported missing very quickly because A, she didn't show up for work. B, didn't pick the kids up from daycare. So the police knew they, you know, they had a good jump start on this because there wasn't a delay in her being reported missing. But they still are starting from square one and trying to kind of look at her and, and go out, you know, kind of like a, a ripple effect if you threw a stone into a body of water. That's kind of how I look at these things. And I, I think they probably pieced this together pretty quickly. Yes, they did. And there will also be some people uh, that will complain that, you know, the police department, you know, acted quickly for whatever reasons. This is, you had evidence of an involuntary disappearance right from the, the start, right? I mean, not showing up for work and not showing up to pick up your kids, those are two giant red flags. Uh, this is, and, and the fact that it, it looks as if she left, you know, her personal belongings behind too. So that would right. be like three red flags in regards to the involuntary disappearance. And the fact that she was reported missing pretty quickly. And I try to get this, I stress this when I, when I speak to people all the time. There is no such thing as a 48-hour rule, a 24-hour rule. As soon as you believe that there's a person in danger or there's someone missing, please report that person missing. And it appears, too, that her family, especially her sister, sister Megan, uh, used social media to kind of keep the word out there about her being missing. So maybe that helped as well. Joe Jackalone, it's always a pleasure to talk with you. Thank you so much for coming on to talk with us about this incredibly Thanks sad Thanks for case. having me. Thanks for having me again. And that's it for this edition of Law & Crime Sidebar Podcast. You can listen to and download Sidebar on Apple, Spotify, Google, and wherever else you get your podcasts. And of course, you can always watch it on Law & Crime's YouTube channel. I'm Anjanette Levy, and we will see you next time.